Hey, welcome to our YouTube. We're about to listen to a message from our church here in Hillsong, Denmark. Make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, or even share with a friend, and stick around afterwards for different ways to connect. Somebody get a coffee for George. It's been a long weekend. We've just been at Frikirgenet conference, uh, which was amazing. And, um, you know, it's just so awesome to see what God is doing across Denmark, in society, but also across the church. Can we thank the creative team up here? You guys are amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Hey, thank you so much for making it here. Um, I know some of you drove to Falconer. How many drove to Falconer? Come on, who went over and just checked up on our old building? Amazing. No shame in that. No shame in that. There's one over here and someone over there. It's so good. Uh, we're back there next week, so don't come here next week. Okay, go back. Go to Falconer. That's where we are um, next week. And uh, that is also going to be fantastic. Tonight, we're back here again, 5 o'clock. Uh, or just stick around. We're going to have lunch afterwards and, um, and hang out. And then uh, tonight, just believe for God to move. And um, man, I, t- I actually love this building. Uh, this looks nice. And, um, but don't worry, we're not moving here. We're just, we just here today. I just cannot uh, be in a building and not start dreaming what we could do with it. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to say anything. Last time I said that, like, people got angry at me. We were in Sigurdsbygning once, and I said, wouldn't it be amazing if we bought this place? And then uh, I just said it like because I got excited, and then the manager got all angry, and like it just, and we've never been invited back. So, so I'm not gonna say anything. We're not gonna buy something. Any, I'm just talking. Okay, that's that. Show. It's not real. Um, well, it's real, but it's not a real person. I too need sleep. Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence. We thank you that you're here. Lord, uh, we thank you that we are stepping into the season of Christmas where the, the light of the world came into darkness. And Lord, I just pray that today may that light, the light of Jesus shine on our hearts, Lord God. May it shine through me into the lives of people, Lord Jesus. I pray that when we leave this place that that, that light will be turned on in people's lives, Lord God, will be enlarged and strengthened, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray for the dark areas of our lives the shadow sides, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just pray that we will continue to walk towards everything that you have for us in terms of freedom, in terms of your purpose. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to speak a message very, uh, this is no surprise, called Light in the Darkness. And um, I don't know why I'm super emotional about this message. Maybe it's because I haven't had a lot of sleep. But um, I, just, I just believe that God wants us to be light in the world. And, um, and so I want to, and, and, and I, can't, I can't yell in here because there, there's so much echo. So you're going you're gonna to see me exercise as much self-control as you ever will as I'm trying to keep it down. But um, in 1998, uh, it's a few years ago now, I was in Wales on a, a missions trip. Uh, I went to this youth Bible college and we went to Wales on a missions trip. And it was like old school revival meetings, you know, like it was in churches, uh, small apostolic churches, and we went door-to-door evangelism. I don't know if anyone's ever done door-to-door evangelism. I mean, that, I mean, it gets you out of your comfort zone. Uh, And so we were like knocking on doors and inviting them to church. And, uh, And I'll never forget it because my friend and I got to this one door and we knocked on the door and it was like this... Um, townhouses, Reigerhuse, and we got to the, one of the last houses, and I knocked on the door, and this short, stocky, elderly man came out, a uh, heavy Welsh accent, hard to understand, um, and he was like, he was wearing something that looked like a corset, uh, and so we were like immediately judging him. Um, as, you know, we were 17, you know, so like immediately just judging this guy who was wearing a corset. And so we were talking with him, and we were trying to invite him to church, and he kept apologizing. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to make it to church. And we're like, it's okay, like, you know, and trying to convince him. And he's like, it's just my health is not so good. And then we're like, oh, okay, and maybe you should come then. And, you know, doing our best. And then I was like, at one point I was like, I'm so sorry, sir, but I've got to ask What's with the corsette? <laughs> and, um, and then he said, um, well, I was part of the f- first wave 
of soldiers on D-Day. You know, you know when you have that feeling that you just shrink to the size of an ant and feel like you don't deserve to speak to the person that you're speaking with, let alone like you're thinking about how much you were just judging him. And he's like, yeah, so I was a part of the first wave that ran onto the beaches of Normandy. And um, later, uh, a few days after we had survived the, the onslaught on the beach, a, uh, a shell blew up next to me and blew my guts out. And uh, basically this corset keeps my uh, intestines in place. I was like, you never have to come to church. I mean, I, just stay where you are. Jesus, you know, you're saved. I mean, <laughs> my theology went out, out the window. And, um, and, you know, so we, were, we obviously forgot everything while we were there and just started asking questions. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, he was, he was ta- telling us about how that, you know, they were, they were sitting for, um, for, for weeks waiting. All the allies were sitting on the English coast for weeks waiting for the weather to be good. Good enough that they could cross the canal in all these boats and then uh, get onto the beaches of Normandy. And he said, it was like the night lasted forever. You're sitting with this overwhelming fear because you're sitting and looking at the people around you and you didn't know whether you would survive the night. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. You know, hope deferred, deferred just means drawn out. It means it's, it's, it's taking its time. You have hope that something's gonna happen, but man, you've been hoping for five years. You've been hoping for six months. You've been hoping for a long time. I've been hoping for this relationship. I've been hoping for this healing. I've been hoping for this breakthrough. I've been hoping to find my place. I've been hoping to find my purpose. And that hope drawn out, that hope deferred, the Bible says it makes the heart sick. It makes the heart sick. It makes the heart not well. For this man in Wales and the thousands of other young men, there was literally a dark, drawn out, night. But I bet you in this room, there would be people that have been in a storm, that would have been in a night season that's been drawn out. And you might not be fearing for your life, you might, but there's this sense of, will I make it through the night? Will I make it through the storm? Will our marriage make it through the storm? Will my health, will my finances, will my business, will my dream make it through this, this obstacle? Will our church make it through this? Like, you can have this sense of, will I actually make it through the other side? This, this situation, there is no escaping. The word gospel, which is the message that we preach, the Christian gospel, it means good news. The good news of Jesus. But you know, it's only good news because there is first some bad news. And it is a, it is a strange thing when you talk to someone and you convince them of the bad news. I don't know if you've ever talked to someone and shared the gospel and actually shared why you're a Christian. There is that sense of, I mean, there is nothing that will ever beat the experience. And if you've not experienced it, I pray that you will. There is nothing that will ever top the experience of seeing the light of Jesus turn in someone's eyes. That moment that someone discovers Jesus loves me. That moment that someone accepts Jesus into their life and it's like they go from black and white into full color HD. That moment it's like, oh my goodness. But before that, there is a moment of despair. That moment when they realize, wait a minute, I have sinned. I have fallen short of the glory of God. Because the bad news is that we live in a broken world. The bad news is that we live in a dark world. Humans, we're broken. There is something inside of us that is broken. God created us perfect, but we rebelled. We did our own thing, and God wanting humans to have free will because what is a relationship if you cannot both choose it and not choose it? And if we we can't say your will be done to God, God will say, well, then your will be done. Then you do it. And now we end up in this mess that we call the world. We end up in the mess of the consequences of decisions that we've made. We may end up in the mess and we look around and it's crazy how many people will blame God for the mess that we have created. 
where is God and why did God? And you know, meanwhile, we are making decision after decision, broken decisions based on broken pursuits and we live in this broken world. And really, there is something inside of us that, that understands that, and we kind of go, well, is this how God created us? No, God created us for a perfect life. God created us to live a life that is supposed to be so much better than what we see right now. And he's the designer and he decides to speak to every single one of us. He, he knows you. He knows how you put, he put you together. Why he gave you the desires that he gave you. He knows all of that and he has the best expression in mind. The problem is we look everywhere else for the answers except Jesus. If I was to buy a Philips television, I wouldn't go and read a Samsung instruction book in how to use my television. Yet so many of us, we look everywhere else but God's instructions called the Christian Bible for how we should live our lives and what principles we should put in place in order to get the most out of life. Jesus created you. You are created in the image of God. Every aspect of your life has been thought of from God. Everything from your, how your finances work, to relationships work, how your mental health work, how your physical health work, all the way through your sexuality, your, 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 your friendships. Every single part of your life is a design of God. And He has principles, He has wisdom to speak into every single one of those areas. And I wanna encourage every single one of us to go to God. Go to God to get that wisdom. But often we don't realize this, and this is the bad news moment. This is the bad news moment where suddenly we realize there is something wrong with the world. You ever had that feeling? There's something wrong with the world. It's like, let me just give away my age. It is like the first installments of the Matrix. Anyone remember watching the first Matrix? Come on, where are my people? Let's, who's old? Who's old with me? The first Matrix. I wanna look at your younger free. Who's, who's, have you, have you guys watched the Matrix? Trixie's saying, what is it? <laughs> wow. Okay, we're having a young and free movie night at our house. Neo, Neo. Keanu Reeves, he meets Morpheus in the first installments of The Matrix. And Morpheus says to Neo, let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know, you cannot explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there is something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. It's the same feeling you have when you go to therapy. You know when you're at therapy, I don't know if you've ever been to therapy. Um, I, we, I regularly get a checkup from the neck up. And, and you know, you sit there and you, you, you start talking about your feelings and how you respond to things. And, and then you, um, I don't know about you, but I, I say, um, yeah, but everyone feels like that. <laughs> Anyone with me? Everyone reacts like that. Everyone punches a hole through the, wait, what? <laughs> Too much information, so it's, no, everyone does that, right? And then it's just silence until finally the conclusion. No, Thomas, not everyone feels like that and not everyone acts like that and not everyone thinks like that. There is something that we can actually adjust. You were not created with those things. That brokenness is not what was in mind when you were first thought of. There is, a, there is actually a better way. But what do we do with the darkness once we discover it? Because we cannot unsee what we have seen. The American philosopher and author Ralph um, Emerson, he once said, the mind once stretched by a new idea never returns to its original dimensions. Once you've got a new concept, once you have seen a better way, once you have seen that there is a whole dessert menu, you cannot unsee it. <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter if you say to your children, maybe they don't have any more ice cream. She's already seen it, it's too late. Her mind has been extend, expanded and it will never return to its original dimensions. Today we're starting the seventh and final chapter of the year, Light in the Darkness. And I wanna just say two things, and they're very simple things. Uh, but the first one is this, we are called to be light in the darkness 
for others. We call to be light in the darkness for others. You know, today in this group, um, this room, we are mainly, I guess I can look out and see, we are mainly a group of people that have found the light, that are light carriers. We're people that have stumbled into the light and are surrounded by people that are still stumbling towards the light. But the fact is, we live in a world of people that are living in darkness. And we can get so used to the light, we can get so used to being able to see that we almost assume, of course, everyone else sees life the way we see it. And maybe even to the point of judging other people, I cannot believe they act like that. I cannot believe they stumble like that. It's like, wouldn't you stumble if you couldn't see? Have you ever walked through a dark room? Wouldn't you stumble? Yet how often do we judge people that are living in darkness when they do things that uh, the people in darkness do? I cannot believe you talk like that. I cannot believe you act like that. I cannot believe you think like that. Why can you not believe that? We are light bearers. And this Christmas, this season of light in the darkness, can we be light bearers? Can we make a, a decision, not just for a season, not just for a chapter, but our lives as Christians, we are supposed to be light carriers. We are supposed to carry the light of Jesus where there is no light. We are supposed to go where there is darkness. We are supposed to go into circles and spheres where there is no light and be the light of the world. John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness and darkness has not overcome it. The word overcome it can mean a number of things. The, the Greek word is a katalabin, and it's translated as overcome here, but it can, it can mean a whole bunch of different things, like uh, to capture or to apply or to overtake. But one of the words as well is understand, to understand. The light shines in the darkness, but darkness cannot understand it, cannot understand it. Our jobs as, as Christians is to make people understand, is to translate, what does this mean? What does it mean? Why are you a Christian? What, what, what does it mean? What translate it to me into my day-to-day -day life? What does it look like day-to-day -day for you being a Christian? More than you're going to heaven, fantastic. But from Monday to Saturday, talk to me. What does it do? What decisions does it change? What does it create of a foundation? This week we heard, um, uh, we heard, we heard a few people debate Wunder Selsing and Kasper Kleistensen debate at, at Freekirchenet and, and they would just ask questions about their journey of faith. And it's funny because Kasper was saying that the, the moment he became public that he was a Christian, people like immediately start writing to him, I cannot believe all the things you cannot do anymore. And he's like, man, you're missing all the things I now have. You think I've cut all this out of my life? I have gained the world. I have gained life, I've gained light. And you're focusing on the few things that were destroying me anyways. It's not always a fight of will. Sometimes it's simply a fight of understanding. People don't always not choose the right thing because they don't want to. Often it's because people think they, don't can't, that they can't. They're not worthy, they're not allowed to. I don't know if you even knew that, but people come into our church and they're like, wow, I wish I could be part of something like this. And we would go, what do you mean? <laughs> like, as if anyone thinks like that, you would be surprised. You'd be surprised how many would come up after a service and go, I wish I could be in a church like this. I was like, well, you are in a church like this. <laughs> you can just keep coming back, am I allowed? Yeah, you're allowed. You're allowed to be part of this kingdom of light. King David, he prayed it like this in 2 Samuel 7, 18. It's one of my favorite prayers in the Bible. Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you brought me this far? A sense of, wow, you included me in your kingdom of light. Church, who are you not to experience God? Who are you not to experience the kindness of God. You are a child of God. Your value, your worth is not determined by what's on your bank account. It's not determined by your education. Your value is not determined by your last success or your last failure. 
your value is determined by the fact that Jesus, he says you're worthy. That Jesus, he laid down his life for you. That Jesus, he said, you are created in the image of God. You are an image bearer. That is your value. And you're not just recipients of light. You're called to be a transmitter, to carry its brilliance into the lives of those that are shrouded in darkness. Just as light pierces through the darkest of nights, we are called to be guiding lights for others. We live in a world that's engulfed in darkness, uncertainty, despair, and our role as light bearers is more crucial than ever. But being a beacon of light doesn't mean that we will be shielded from shadows ourselves. I think some of us, we sometimes go, well, who am I to share the light with others? I am not perfect. I am not like, and then they mention someone that they don't, they don't know well enough to understand that they are not perfect either. <laughs> I'm not like her, I'm not like him. I'm not like this preacher I know on social media. <laughs> I could never be an example. I could never share the light with someone because we look at the shadow sides. But sometimes the shadow sides is what brings forth the brilliance of Jesus. In my weakness, I am strong because it's in my weakness that his strength is seen so much more. Like the stars in the night that shine because it is, it is on the backdrop of the darkness. So this treasure we have and we hold within us, we hold it lightly and we hold it with, a, with humble hands because we understand that this is not based on what I have done. It is purely the grace of God. Let us remember our duty is not to judge those in darkness, but is to offer them a path to the light. It's to extend a hand. This, this Christmas, the Christmas tree, let's, let's empty it today. Let, let, let's, let's open our homes. Let's open our hearts. Let, let's find that if we have a spare seat at the table Christmas Eve, let's, let's find the lonely. Our job is to shine a light on Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes, Jesus is their light. Hello. Welcome, Thomas, it's nice to meet you. Jesus is the light, yes, but you and I, we're the light bearers. We're, we're called to carry the light, called to be the image bearers of Jesus. The, the Message Bible puts it like this. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. And if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm gonna hide you under a bucket, do you? No, I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you there on the hilltop on a light stand, shine. Keep open house, be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you will prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. It is amazing how Jesus says, if you can open up your life through practical deeds, you can open up their hearts to God. By this they will know that you're my disciples, by the way that you love one another, the way you talk about, about each other, the way you talk about each other when no one else is listening, the way you talk about each other, the way you treat each other, the way, the way you serve one another. By that, people will know you're my disciples. By your deeds. What can we do? What can we do with the, the, the time we have? What can we do with the treasure we have? What can we do with the talent we have? to extend kindness. You don't have to be preachy about it, but you don't have to hide Jesus either. You can go here, God bless you. That's enough, in Denmark, that's enough. Wait, what? <laughs> Who what now? <laughs> God bless you. What does that mean? It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be preachy. I just experienced Jesus, and I just wanna show a little bit of the kindness I have felt. And I just want to give it to you. That's it. So here you go. Here's a meal. Here's a coffee. Here's an invitation. And by opening up your heart, 
you are opening up their hearts. But I think as Christians, unfortunately, too many times we have demoted God and we've put ourselves in the throne of judgment. And we've made decisions of who are worthy and not worthy to receive salvation. I know I have. Anyone else? No? You know, you look at someone and you're like, they're not ready. They're so far away. He's rude. I don't want to talk to him. Like we, make, we, make, we make judgment. We hear stories of how people find Jesus. You know, I cannot believe, that's not Jesus. Jesus would never do that. You know, what? Like, they, they were tripping on drugs and they found Jesus? No way, that's not God. Or, or what? They, they found Jesus like over here? Like, how, how, would, well, how would that happen? And we box God in, don't we? And so we, we make calls, we make decisions of who we want to give attention to and help in their Christian walk. Could I just say, let God be God? Can we just let God be God? All, all I know is that the Bible says that God loves everyone. He decides everyone to be saved. So don't you think He will use everything He has available to, to draw people unto Himself? That He will use whatever, that He will make people dream dreams, that He will make people see things, that, that people will experience things, that even strangers will walk over. We've had people in our church, sit, uh, uh, I think he's here tonight, sit on the metro and have people come over, speak another language that the guy didn't even speak and prophesy into their lives. And when he asked, who are you? How do you know me? He just left, disappeared. Is it an angel? I don't know. Was he maybe just drunk and just babbling? I don't know. But God used that guy in order to reach that guy because that is how good and kind our God he is. He draws us in with his kindness. Let God be God. The truth is the light of Jesus shines in society. Jesus is saving people. And our jobs as Christians is to figure out where the light is shining and enlarge and go for it. And I want to encourage you, and I'll be talking more about this in the weeks to come, but to be looking for the questions, to be looking for the coincidences, to be looking for where God, He is on the move. I have learned a long time ago not to box God. I mean, I grew up with a guy who dragged a cross around, for goodness sake. Nothing is traditional in my family. I do not box God in. God is on the move. He's touching people's lives. And our responsibility is to figure out what is He doing? We're not bringing Jesus into the world. He's already there. It's just us to figure out what He's doing and get on board with that. Light someone else's fire. Stir the hunger. Throw another log on the fire. Friends that you look around and go, where, where are they? People that it seems like their passion is, is getting dull. You're not judging them, but stir the fire. Blow the embers. Stoke the fire again. And let us experience the flame of the gospel shine again. The second thing I want to say, and I'll finish with this, sorry, is that no matter how dark your season is, there's always hope. There's always hope. Where there is life, there is hope. And I wanna encourage those of you that are maybe just in a dark season in life right now. I don't wanna just label it depression because that's just one thing and that's also a medical thing. It could be a whole bunch of things. I'm just talking about a dark season, okay? And, and you, you will know what that is in your life. Can I encourage you to, 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 to your best of your ability to take the eyes off yourself and onto someone else? It is amazing how much light comes to you when it goes through you. The Bible has a word for this or a principle for this. Proverbs eleven twenty five. it says, A generous man will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. If I can go, okay, I'm just gonna, okay, I'll, I'll complain tomorrow, but today I'm gonna serve someone else. T today I'm just gonna focus on someone else's happiness. 
I, I'm not neglecting myself. I'll deal with me tomorrow. But right now, I'm going to serve someone else. I, I'm going to share the gospel with someone else. I don't know all. I don't know much. I know a little bit. But the little bit I have, I'm going to share with someone else. I, I, I can't preach like Thomas is preaching it. I can't sing it like Elizabeth is singing it. I can't play it like Casper is playing it. I can't do what everyone else is doing. But what I can is just say, hey, I don't know much, but what I do know, I was in a broken place and someone gave me the water of the gospel and I have a little bit of my thirst quenched. I'm still thirsty. There is still so much more to get, but the little I have, I would like to give to you. I know that Jesus loves me. I don't know why. I can't explain it theologically. I just know I love God and He loves me. Me, and I know that He loves you and He wants you to love Him too. <laughs> and it's amazing and it's, as their light starts turning on in them, you, your soul starts to get refreshed. You start getting refreshed. How can you serve someone else? It could be practically, and this is not supposed to be a rally cry for volunteers, but I'll go there. <laughs> People standing on the doors and smiling to someone else. It's amazing. You're looking at someone else, serving someone else putting purpose to your time, putting purpose into your finances, putting purpose onto your gift. He or she who refreshes others, they themselves will be refreshed. Where there's life, there is hope. Proverbs, not Proverbs, Psalm 112 verse four says, light arises for the righteous. Wherever you're feeling darkness right now, whether it's in your life, your kids, your grandkids, extended family, some friends that you're like, man, when, when will their eyes be open? Light will arise. Light will arise. Keep praying. Keep believing. Do not give up. You do not know how close they are. And they are stumbling right now and they are feeling up the wall looking for the light switch. Keep pointing them towards the door. Keep pointing them towards the light. The time will come that they will thank you for not giving up. The light will shine again. And in your own life, this will not be the end of you. The morning is on its way. But it all starts with connecting your life with Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. The light of the world. A, an amazing quote by C.S. Lewis. And someone said to me recently, you guys really love C.S. Lewis in this church. I was like, we really, really do. Um, an amazing quote that he said is, a friendship is born the moment when one says to someone else, what, you too? I think you could recognize that. Wait, you too? You like that too? You do that too? You eat like that too? You do that, you do that with your straw as well? What, you too? You like that team as well? A friendship is born. The moment someone says, what? You too. And then you come into church and a preacher like me starts telling you that God wants to be friends with you. How are we as humans to say to God, what, you too? What possibly could he know about my situation? How could he possibly have any insight into my limitations and weaknesses? I understand he wants me to serve him, but friendship, I think that's reserved for someone that's walked in my shoes. Yet then we get Christmas. And God took human form, incarnated, born as a human, 100% man, 100% God, and he lived like a human and he experienced every temptation and trial like you and I have some of my favorite verses in the gospel says and Jesus was tired and Jesus was hungry and Jesus wept and Jesus sat down and Jesus asked for food you know why because those verses are my moment saying what you too you felt betrayed too? You, you felt pain too? You felt the limitations too? You felt tired too? You felt like giving up too? You felt like saying, God, if you can let this pass by, please give it to someone else. 
but not my will. Your will be done. Jesus knows you. He knows you. He knows what it's like growing up single and everyone else experiencing families. Jesus knows what it's like growing up as a refugee. He was a refugee, grew up 12 years in Egypt, came back to his hometown with an accent, the odd one out. Didn't share the same memories as everyone else. What, you too? And today, I want to just pray for anyone that don't know Jesus. Maybe you know him as king. Maybe you know him as God. But today, he invites you to be his friend. To start a friendship. To let the light of Jesus into your life. Could I get everyone to close your eyes? Bow your heads just to give you a moment of privacy. If you're here today and you say, Thomas, I don't know, Je know Jesus like that. I just, I want to let Jesus into my life. Maybe I had pushed him away because what possibly could he know about me? And maybe I realize now that maybe he knows me better than I know me. And today I just want to accept Jesus into my life. Maybe you're one of those that are just, you walked away a bit, if we were to be honest. It's just, it's not the same. And today you just want to say, hey, I want to, I want to just say yes to Jesus again. I'm just going to give everyone just a moment of privacy. But if you're here and you say, Thomas, can you pray for me? Can you include me in a prayer to say yes to Jesus? If that's you, can you just raise your hand all over this place? Just lift your hand just so I know who I'm praying for. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Just lift your hand just so I know who I'm praying for. That are just saying, I need, I need Jesus. I want Jesus like that. Thank you. Beautiful. I want Jesus to be my friend. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. So good. We can put our hands down. We're going to say a prayer together. And I want to ask everyone to say this prayer, but especially those who lifted your hand. or Maybe you didn't, but you know you shouldn't. This is our moment. It's not a hand in the air that saves us. The Bible says, confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. And from that moment, you will find forgiveness from your past, a purpose for today, and a hope for the future. So come on, just repeat this prayer after me. Just say, dear Jesus, thank you for your love. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my sin. But today I choose you. From today, I'm a follower of Jesus. I am forgiven. And I am free. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can we congratulate and celebrate every person making this decision? Beautiful. Hey, if you, uh, if you prayed that prayer, uh, we, uh, we have a gift for you. It's a Danish Bible. We are in the process of uh, ordering more English Bibles. And uh, so I'm sorry that we haven't got those yet. But we will show you uh, an app or online of how you can get an English Bible. And we're also in the process of writing a Bible study for really the first seven days of being a Christian. And uh, so we're excited to launch that soon. Uh, just need to get my act together. But um, if, you, if you pray the prayer, can I encourage on the way out, uh, just through the doors, uh, our team will be ready uh, just and waving one of these Bibles. Oh, over there, hello. Uh, they're waving right now. And uh, so just go up and say, I'd love one of those free Bibles. And just grab one and maybe grab hold of someone in church if you don't know anyone and say, hey, now what? We'd love to just connect you with people. And we got connect groups that meet during the week where they talk about the Bible, you know, and just talk about the things of God. And, you know, maybe you've been coming to church for a while. I had a friend yesterday that said to me, dude, I've been, I've been walking now for a while now. I, I actually want to go deeper. Can we, can we start something? I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. And so maybe that's you. Maybe you just go, hey, I've been coming for a while, but now I just want to, I want to dig a bit deeper now. Then, uh, then I want to encourage you, go, talk to the team and just say, I'd love to join a connect group. And then just keep coming back. Find yourself in a place where people want to encourage you in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Can we stand to our feet? We really hope that that encouraged and blessed you. If you made a decision for Jesus, a massive congratulations from us. We would love to be in contact with you, send you a Bible and connect you to a local church. So... 
just below in the details of this episode, this different way to contact us. I can encourage you to reach out so that we can help you. Obviously, if you live anywhere near one of our physical locations, we really hope to see you in person very soon. There is nothing like being in the room. Can I also encourage you, if this blessed you, why don't you share this with friends and you know, make sure you pass it on to them as well. Make sure to click, click subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode we send out. God bless you.